five, four, three, two, one. Now that I have uh, Rhythm Nation going through my head. Sorry. All right. I'm Microsoft Teaming with Microsoft Teams. I'm learning and dreaming with Microsoft Teams. The hub and the teamwork of Microsoft 365 in these four amazing times. I'm Microsoft Teaming with Microsoft Teams. Yeah. With Microsoft Teams. Welcome to Inside Microsoft Teams. I'm your host, Stephen Rose. We've just hit the one year point in the pandemic and what we referred to as the new normal has now, for lack of a better term, just become normal. As students start to head back to the classroom, we're also seeing many school districts look closely at the unexpected values of remote learning, like where English is the second language for students with handicaps and learning disabilities. Remote learning has proved to be a huge boon for a whole segment of learning. With features like real-time transcription, translation, and new ways to engage students, school districts are trying to merge the best of in-person with some of the newfound value in remote learning. I'm excited uh, to have on the show today a school district that I really think has you know, taken that challenge and bridged that gap. The Susquehanna Township School District, which is absolutely a mouthful in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, has nearly 2,900 students with a teacher ratio of 14 to 1. What's interesting is out of the nearly 500 school districts in Pennsylvania, they're ranked number one for diversity and 14th for diversity nationwide. So they're a great example of what can be done with a, uh, you know, with a wide variety of students within the classroom and within the district. I'd like to welcome today to the show, Justin Green and Robert McDonald from the Susquehanna Township School District for joining me today. Thank you, gentlemen. Justin, take a moment and introduce yourself. Thank you. My name is Justin Green, Director of Technology for Susquehanna Township School District. This is my 19th year in PAA education and my ninth year as Director for Susquehanna Township School District. Awesome. Robert? My name is Robert McDonald. I am a teacher at Susquehanna Township High School. I have been teaching for 20 years. This is my 18th year with the district. I teach biology and environmental science. So, Justin, when you sat down in July preparing for September. This was, you know, in the pandemic. Was this planned right from the beginning? Was this your approach to remote learning the whole time and that it was going to spawn all these benefits? Or was it, hey, we're in the wilderness, let's kind of think out of the box. How did you kind of come up with this concept? Yeah, I wish it was our idea from the beginning. Unfortunately, it was not. We knew as an administrative team that what we did in the spring was not going to work as we continued into the pandemic. So the group got together and we really brainstormed about what the return to school would look like in the fall. And always what is center in our minds is what is best for the student and their families. So we had lots of conversation about, and some of them were heated and it was what what is best uh, taking into Uh, the account of health and safety. But ultimately, what we decided is that our teachers teaching our students is the best learning experience for them. So how could we accomplish that? So we decided that we were going to find a technology that would allow us to teach remote students and in-person students simultaneously. You didn't just pick one technology, you actually implemented a variety of different ones. But let's talk about the implementation. I know when we were chatting, you were saying it was rough because you're using, um, you know, the Slice system from HP, you're using the Logitech Brio, you're using the Pancast Jabra. So let's take a minute, kind of talk about how you envision the setup, because I think what you've done is really interesting, because although you were building it for remote, you also realized that there could be some great benefits to students in the classroom where especially in a science class or things like that, where people are gathered around or have to huddle that you could create a more one-to-one experience, both live and in per, uh, sorry, uh, uh, virtual and live. Mm -hmm. So our goal for our remote students was to replicate the in-school experience as closely as possible. So as we started to um, MacGyver the solution together, it was truly, uh, what what can we implement that really brings the student to that front of the classroom seat, even though they're at home? 
So we started looking at what a primary teacher would need and what a secondary teacher would need, what an English teacher would need, what a science teacher would need. And we tried to be uh, flexible enough with our hardware offerings that we could customize the solution for a, a large um, swath of our teachers. And trying to do this in 90 days, no less, and getting hardware in a time when people were on a three month wait list for a webcam. So how did you get through that? And let's talk about training. You know, how, that's not giving, once you figure out how this is all gonna work and how you're gonna manage it and update it, that doesn't leave a whole lot of time to get your teachers up to speed, which is the most important part of this whole equation. Absolutely. In addition to all that, we needed to get buy-in from our board and community for right. a fairly significant expense. So I spent the week or the month of July really taking a look at the hardware, engineering a solution, uh, building relationship with the key partners that I needed to, got demo units of all the equipment in place, brought in staff so they could review the solution, making sure we got teacher buy-in as we moved through the process. Once we got teacher buy-in and administrator buy-in, we took this to our board of school directors, had multiple presentations to them regarding the solution. And once we got the funding, uh, it was all hands on deck to try to uh, procure all the equipment in time. Uh, in time is relative. Uh, we ended up delaying the start of school um, by a little over a week so we could get the equipment in and uh, unfortunately because of the timeline we provided training on a few demo units and while that training was happening a second team was going through and installing the equipment in the classrooms so it wasn't ideal by any stretch of the imagination but we did right. get teachers exposure to it okay one, one more question that I want to get to Robert and talk about his experience. But uh, after taking a look at your school district, there's a lot of inequity between the levels of the students and, you know, how much they're making and where they live, uh, free and reduced lunch, Title I, et cetera. How did you make sure that everybody could have the same experience working from home? Some schools have done hotspots, some have not been able to. So how did you approach that to make sure that this would be an even playing field for everyone? Sure. So prior to pandemic, we were very close to a one to one school district. We were about 80, 80 percent there. So we didn't have that far to go from a student hardware perspective. The teachers had been using the team's environment for a handful of years. So that was in place. So now it was simply bringing in the technology to allow the teacher to engage the students at a higher level than they were used to uh, for students who needed hotspots. Uh, we provided them really uh, no questions asked uh, we and we distributed um, luckily we've only had to distribute close to about 80. Robert so what was your thought when you know Justin comes to you and says hey here's what we're gonna do what was your uh, oh and by the way we only have a few weeks to get this done before school starts <laughs> what was what was your thought when he came to you with all this so initially the thought is uh, how how are we yeah. going to get all of that um, done, implemented, uh, teachers trained uh, in the short period of time uh, that he laid out in front of me? Uh, and then I started to think about what it meant for, for what I was doing uh, and what it meant for our ability to reach our students and uh, was kind of in awe uh, in the fact that uh, that type of solution was out there and that he was able to sort of Frankenstein it together to make it something that worked well for uh, the teaching staff. Awesome. So how did this change the way that you teach? Because you've got to take a step back and go, well, I was ready just to do, you know, teams classes and I was used to doing it. Now there's this sort of amalgamation of doing this differently. And then also at some point when we do come back, how is can this still be used and be integrated in? So how did you approach how you teach and how this changes how students engage? So in the spring when we shut down um, and we were at home with just our laptops, uh, you started to try to put together your own way of teaching. Um, it was very difficult um, to manipulate and handle all of the different uh, screens and things like that that you sort of need to have uh, to engage those students. Uh, in the remote aspect. Um, what the technology did actually was made it uh, easier. 
Um, it made it so that now I'm in front of my classroom, which is the comfortable spot for any teacher to be. It made it so that I had uh, more tools at my disposal uh, in order to engage those students who are viewing me from home, um, as well as the students that are in the classroom. Um, it gave me uh, a better a better platform really to teach from uh, when you think about uh, what was being asked of the teaching uh, in this new normal uh, where we were asked to teach kids both at home and in person. Uh, it really did make life easier, um, though the beginning was a bit rocky in terms of out and getting it started. But uh, today uh, you start to see um, improvements every day from teachers uh, and how they engage their students uh, and mostly based upon uh, the new things that are available to us in the classroom with the brio uh, and the java java cast and the and the slice it makes it a lot easier to engage with those kids how are you sharing information how are the teachers sort of saying hey I'm, i tried doing this or i did this or hey breakout rooms are now available or whatever how how are you sort of you know sharing that information so we got I, i'll say we got uh lucky and smart at the same time um <clears throat> i'm part of the leadership team at the high school where i am in charge of the science department uh, i've also been on the group that has been uh, the pilot for the one-to-one -one, and then continuing on down through doing technology trainings when we got new devices so i'm sort of like the the quasi lead technology person at the high school and our or guinea pig guinea pig yeah, is a guinea perfect pig. term that's as well. pretty much how it works yeah matter <laughs> yes that has happened to me before too um sure. yesterday so the <laughs> the uh, math department chairperson actually sat down with the schedules and said hey rob i can make it so that you teach just one class a day with the way that we redesigned our schedule um and we pointed out to our 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 principal dr smith and said this would give us an opportunity to have a teacher who knows the technology who is experienced to be able to help and be a liaison between the hardware the ones and zeros that is justin uh and sort of the instructional side which is the rest of the 70 plus people that are teaching right. inside of the building so we got really lucky there and we do every wednesday i have a half hour technology thing where i sit down and uh, take questions and answer things and bring up new things like when um, breakout rooms rolled out, uh, when the new recording <clears throat> protocol uh, rolled out, like all that stuff we end up uh, pointing out in that Wednesday half hour time slot so that the teachers are never really broadsided by something. No, we sure. still get broadsided by stuff, but you know, yeah. we're a little better prepared. So, so there were different features. Um, that you actually brought into teams that really expanded a lot of that functionality. And we were talking about the student information system and school data sync. What is that and how did that really sort of change the game for you? Before uh, we were doing uh, hand entering things, before we changed to a school uh, information system or a student information system that is campus. Um, and once we were in campus and we were able to use certain uh, protocols, Justin was able to get us into uh, the school data sync, which actually takes my class roster and pulls it immediately into a Microsoft group or a team. And then that shows up on my team's platform so that I can then interact with those students via teams uh, and teams meetings and things like that. And the beautiful thing is that Microsoft and campus got together uh, and made it so that I can actually grade my assignments inside of Teams and then it throws it back to campus, which is our school information system that then broadcasts the report cards and progress reports home to the parents. So outside of email, you really never have to leave Teams, which is ideal that you're both doing your internal work as well as your teaching and working with the students there as well, correct? Yeah, so even even inside of teams i can use features that allow me to email my class as a whole um, right. i just can't get to the parents uh, so as that improves i'm sure uh, in the roadmaps ahead with teams uh, that they'll start to look at how we can increase the parent interaction uh, with the uh, with the teams as well but yeah it's been very nice very seamless for them for the most part it uh, it adds my students when they add in um, and it makes it so that I don't have to really worry a lot about 
uh, missing something or the kids don't have to worry about missing stuff because they're there. Yeah, no, it makes a huge difference. Cool. Well, what I'd like to do now is do a demo. So I'd actually like to have you walk us through the system. So, all right, Robert, I'm a student. I'm in class. I'm ready to learn. Right. So you're sitting at home and I'm in front of a classroom hundreds of miles away and you're able to actually see all of my hand gestures and everything that is happening uh, in the front of the classroom uh, from side to side uh, using uh, the JobberCast uh, camera so that uh, the students in the room are seeing everything and you're seeing everything in real time uh, just as if you were sitting here, which is really kind of nice uh, for a kid who is you know, sitting at home thinking they're missing out on school. Uh, no, we're just going to bring it to you. Uh, so like you can see the, the, the contacted device, we have a PowerPoint up. So as a student, you can see it through the camera, but you can also see it if you flip from the camera to the connected device as a student, you can actually see this in the middle of the meeting uh, screen. And then if you, you know, if I need to, I can move from the shot of my projector. I can actually change this so that I can use a whiteboard that is also in the front of my room by changing to a content camera, which is able to then pick up the white surface in the front of the room. Uh, what's kind of really cool about this is I can actually go over here and I can start writing on the surface. Uh, and, and you don't specifically see all of it until I walk away. Uh, and then if like you're in the classroom, you wouldn't see that until I turn away and if I step back in front of it now, as you're trying to take notes, you wouldn't be able to see it either. So the cool thing here is that even a kid in a classroom uh, can actually get into the meeting and they can actually see what it is that the teacher has written on the board while the teacher's being a big oaf and standing in front of it, uh, which is really kind of nice. I wish that this technology existed when I was in high school. Maybe I would have gotten more of my notes done. Yeah. So. And we're doing real time. Uh, we're doing transcription and we're doing, uh, yeah. you know, um, uh, our uh, live caption. So we're able to see everything that's being said and who's saying it, which also really helps students that, like I said, that may not just be remote, but may actually be there. And it really helps to kind of see that, especially for English as a second language and various um, uh, students that have different learning disabilities. So this is absolutely tremendous. And how has this changed engagement? I mean, have you seen more students getting involved in conversations and within the classes remotely? So like anything, it takes it, uh, it takes some time for people to get used to stuff. I really think that the technology is in, is is so new to the kids too, uh, that the conversation and engagement, uh, though it might not be to a level that we'd like it to, I think that it's starting to get there. We're starting to see teachers use more and more things to make sure that they are touching those kids at home with uh, like random name generators and just throwing a, throwing popsicle sticks on the desks and figuring out how to make sure that the kids at home as well as in the classroom engage in conversation. No teenager wants to talk. It doesn't, it wouldn't matter what what we were doing, but uh, trying to force them to engage is, is, is becoming something that teachers are getting more and more comfortable with. So let me show you the close-up camera. So what we were talking about earlier with being able to show something that is on a desktop, or like if I'm an elementary school teacher reading a book, I can actually bring this camera so that it bears down a little bit on the desk that I'm at, uh, so that you might be able to see these are, these are parts of a flower. These are the male parts of a flower. So I can talk about the granulars here that you can see are the pollen grains that come out when the uh, when the anther splits. So that's kind of cool. Like a kid in the back of the room is not going to see those grains. Uh, where a kid now can be in the meeting in the back of the room and actually see all those little bumps that are there. So this is another use of that camera that's kind of cool. And then that's the same view as if you were standing around the desk, but now everybody is equal and gets to see that the same way. Yeah, now even the short kid gets to see it when he, when he got pushed to the back. So Justin feels better. That is tremendous. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. That's absolutely fantastic stuff. So Justin, talk to me about best practices because you've got to deal with docking stations and firmware and software updates and really looking at a wide variety now of hardware and software that you've got to manage, always keep up to date, bring out those new features, but also create awareness on what's changing and what's going on. How do you best manage that? So when we provisioned the rooms, we actually provisioned them based upon the room number. So we did a building identifier 
followed by the room number, which made it very easy for the classroom teacher to understand what they were connecting to. So uh, as we look at bringing additional hardware into the mix, um, Teams Rooms does a great job of auto updating. It has a uh, built in restart every night to make sure that it's a fresh start for the teacher in the morning. Um, as the teacher provisions their, their calendar invites and they invite the room, on the uh, front of room display, it actually shows all of the uh, schedule for the teacher as it is in periods. So it's a real clean and easy view for the teacher. Um, in terms of managing the hardware, um, we brought a lot of the equipment into Intune to manage uh, the update cycles and the patches. And then do you have like a testing lab where you'll run this through first and kind of see what's going to be affected and all that? Absolutely. So our testing lab involves those guinea guinea pig teachers, <laughs> uh, one of those who's, who is on the call. Um, and we generally do uh, uh, release rings. So we do our pilot testers and then we do a, a full release afterwards. Excellent. So, Robert, how has this changed how you approach teaching? It's a big um, shift. It, it is. I mean, but I think that we've minimized the shift in terms of the direct instruction with the implementation implementation of the cameras and things like that. I think the biggest shift has come in trying to maintain um, sort of the equity between our in-person and our remote access students and making sure that we engage them. Uh, so it's a conscious type of effort to make sure that I am engaging those students uh, that are both in front of me uh, and that are, you know, a few miles down the road in their house, uh, trying to uh, make sure that I'm doing a good job them as well as the other people. Um, now you're going to you're going to continue to use this system because it provides a great thing for students who are homesick or can't make it in. But also, you've seen some really interesting value for the students that are in the classroom. Take a minute and talk about how this makes sense inside, even if nobody is virtual. Yeah. So one of the things that we found out during our testing phase at the beginning of the year was that we could really uh, engage the students in the classroom uh, as well as those at home. I, more effectively because the cameras allowed for the students in the room to see exactly what the teacher wanted them to see up close and personal without having to get out of their seat and run up to the front of the classroom and elbow each other for a space and possibly burn themselves on my Bunsen burner or whatever the case may be. Uh, and I think that that's going to be an invaluable thing going forward is the, the, the close range demonstration that can occur without having to get students up and in, you know, in proximity to the actual danger. Let's say, yeah. for example, you know, you're throwing sodium into water. Yeah, you don't need them that close to it, but no. it'd be nice to be able to have them see it uh, with the use of a camera. Yeah. My daughter has auditory processing issues, and what's great for her is she can turn on the real-time transcription. And even if she's in classroom and they were to do, that'd be great because then she could see what that teacher is saying, which really helps her um, her brain to be able to work a little quicker to bring that all together. So there are so many values in classroom that I think this really opens up a whole new way that you're going to be able to be even more successful in really helping to, you know, not just teach, you know, students, but really engage them in new ways and give everybody a more equal platform. And I think that that's super exciting. We'll have a blog up in the next few days that will show out uh, not only the resources that uh, the folks here at the Susquehanna Township District are using, but additional great resources for those of you that are educators. The work you guys have done is absolutely tremendous. I a lot of gratitude towards taking some time out. I know how busy you are and being on the show today. So thanks so much to both of you. Well, thank you for having us. It's some amazing stuff from Susquehanna, but at the core of it, what really brings that to life is the partnership that they had with HP in bringing in the hardware, bringing the software together, and really helping them to bring the solution to life. And at the core of that is Martin Schwartz. Martin, thanks for joining me today. You bet. Uh, love being here. Love talking about the solution. Absolutely. Well, take a moment. First of all, let tell uh, the folks out there who you are. And then I want to really kind of dig into uh, talking about behind the scenes that with that really incredible demo that we just saw and how you brought that to life. Yeah, you bet. Martin Schwartz. I'm with HP. Been here about four years. I'm in the Office of the Future group and uh, basically a subject matter expert 
in collaboration and conferencing systems. Yeah, I was brought into the Susquehanna Township School District opportunity in the summer time frame. So very short window. They were preparing for their fall session. They brought me in. Uh, they had started testing different Microsoft Teams room systems, wanted to try out the HP solution. So they brought me in. And uh, quite frankly, I just started collaborating with them right off the bat. I asked them what their key requirements were. They told me about their requirement to create a hybrid synchronous learning experience. They wanted to make sure they could provide uh, learning and an educational experience, instructional content experience, both for students to come into the classroom as well as external classroom and uh, provide basically the students and uh, the teachers and uh, the parents choice. We started uh, with our HP Elite Slice G2 system and provided them a demo system. And we just started creating the environment, testing out different capabilities of the system of how we could make sure that the teachers weren't overburdened with having to learn a new system, uh, making, a making it too complex because we don't want to do that. We didn't want to take any real estate away from the teacher's desks as well. Uh, and we got pretty creative in what we came together with. And quite frankly, it came perfectly in being able to deliver the solution just in time, right before the class uh, period started in the fall. Now, now the G2 Slice, that's really, it's the touch screen and it's the hardware that's powering all those different cameras as we move between the wide angle to the, to the presenter view, et cetera. And that's what's really linking all the classrooms together and allowing uh, them to do all the management, correct? Yeah, absolutely. When you look at the solution that we came up with, um, in fact, I'll bring up a slide here. Yeah, walk us through this and, and what's involved in this. Yeah, you bet. Uh, the whole system started with the uh, cart. We, we purchased a cart, and on top of the cart, we placed the HP uh, Elite Slice G2 with Microsoft Teams Room. This system has four speakers built into it on each side of the Slice unit. You can see it here on the right on the endpoint device. It's got the compute module and it has an HDMI ingest module, which is connected to the teacher's docking station. So at all times, the teacher's system is connected through the Microsoft Teams room, through this Elite Slice system, which connects to the rest of the peripherals. You can see here on the left, included in it is our touch display. That's where all the class periods are pre-scheduled. Uh, so they were using their SIS system. They uh, completely uh, scheduled all the remote students into this class scheduling system. All the periods were predefined, period one, two, three, et cetera. So all the teacher needed to do is one touch to start their classes, and they had full control using that touch screen. We also added this confidence monitor that you're seeing on top here. Mm -hmm. So this is a teacher right before they're going to class, and then once they start their class, there they can now see the remote students. And so we call it the confidence monitor so the teacher can engage directly with the remote students, see if they're raising hands, et cetera, while they're still teaching to the in-room students. In fact, one of the things we did with this cart is made sure it could kind of rotate. So the teacher in this kind of view maybe is sitting at their desk and they're teaching both to the in-room students and looking at the monitor to the remote students, but they can kind of swivel it around. They could actually walk to the front of the classroom and teach kind of over this unit and see both the in-room students and remote students at the same time. And then as you mentioned, we did have a couple cameras attached to this. We decided to go with the two camera approach. One of the cameras we used is a Jabra Panacast camera. You can see here kind of a image uh, without any teacher in front. It has a 180 degree field of view. You can see all the way from the door to the window to the desk. So the teacher can roam anywhere in front of the classroom. You can see here our friend Justin uh, yep. being auto framed down here. And so the teacher's always in view. The remote students are always feeling that engagement with the teacher because the teacher's always being seen with the teacher camera. And then we had a second camera, as you saw in the demo, and that was the content camera. And uh, originally we were thinking just using it as a whiteboard camera, but quite frankly, the biggest use of this is using it as an object camera. You can see here it's on a swivel. This teacher is actually showing some content being displayed on a table. 
So the in-room students don't even have to get up. The remote students are seeing the same thing the in-room students are seeing. So this Logitech Brio camera, the content camera, was used both for whiteboard sharing as well as object and content sharing. And we saw that earlier today, and it's just great how they can bring that in and sort of share that about. So if people wanted to, you know, connect with you or learn more about the G2 system, what's the best way for them to move forward with that? Yeah, you bet. You can always go to hp.com. You can go to our collaboration or do a search on the HP Elite Slice G2 or contact your HP account representative or your partner business manager. We have a lot of partners that work with our technology. Or feel free to contact me directly, martin.schwartz at hp.com. Be glad to provide some free consultation. And in fact, we even have some loaner units. We can actually equip a classroom, get you set up, and have you try it for 30 days and see if this fits exactly your needs. That's awesome. And I know that's what a lot of folks, after seeing what they've done, are going to want to take a look at this as we move from that remote to hybrid and really try to create this best experience. Thanks for your time today, Martin. This was awesome. You bet. Thank you. Appreciate it. I am so excited about all the great stuff that we saw today. First of all, I want to thank Justin and Robert and Martin for their time. It's awesome showing not a vision of the classroom of the future, but really showing this amazing technology and how it's helping not only remote students, but those students who are right there in the classroom every single day. Really great stuff. And I encourage you to check out some of the links so you can learn more about this or reach out to me if you have additional questions or not finding what you need. Again, thanks to all of our guests. We'll see you all in a few weeks for our next show. And thank you for tuning in to this week's Inside Microsoft Teams. Jazz hands and scene.